our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with this Spirit. Today we celebrate the 12th Sunday of ordinary time. Let us now prepare ourselves for this celebration by first acknowledging our sins, asking God's mercy and forgiveness.
lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce them. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, but they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more through the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In our gospel today, Jesus says, Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body. When we live in a society where the focus is more on the material, the physical, and the sensual, it is so easy to be concerned only with our physical health, with our earthly life, and not so much with the spiritual and life beyond. Our tendency is to be more afraid of earthly death instead of eternal death. There are those who put more priority in going to the gym than to the church. Catholics, there are Catholics who take all sorts of vitamins and minerals but take for granted the Eucharist. What can destroy body and soul in Gehenna? What can kill our soul for all eternity? Our second reading gives us the answer that sin has entered our world. The Genesis story of Adam and Eve gives us a response to our question. What gives us life, beauty, goodness, brilliance, joy, and peace is our connection with God, the source of all these. When Adam and Eve sinned, they cut their connection with God and with all the good things that comes from God. Thus, death ugliness, evil, darkness, sadness, and chaos entered our lives. We still feel the effect of the sin today. When we see in the news the tension, the injustice, the violence, the rioting, it continues to plague our society and our lives. Sin separates us from God, humanity from divinity. What connects us back to God, what connects humanity to divinity, is none other than the one who is both God and man, human and divine, the one who never sinned. Our Lord Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, to get rid of the fear of eternal death, two things are needed. First, we need to restore our connection by attaching, uniting, and communing with Jesus. In the Gospel, Jesus says, Anyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. Second, we need to avoid and cleanse ourselves of sin, which separates us from God and from all the good things that God gives. Today, Jesus is reminding us that our eternal soul are more precious than our earthly bodies. In 1911, during China's Republican Revolution, anti-Catholic militants seized a Catholic parish in China. They confined the pastor to house arrest from his rectory window, he witnessed the, the desecration of his church 
in the tabernacle. Sacred hosts were scattered all around the sanctuary. Each night, despite the danger, an 11-year-old Chinese Catholic girl would go inside the church to make a holy hour and then consume one of the hosts lying on the floor by bending down to receive Jesus on her tongue. She continued this until she received the last remaining host on the floor. On the last night, unfortunately, a guard was awakened. He chased her, grabbed her, and beat her to death with his rifle. Her story inspired the late Archbishop Fulton Sheen while he was a seminarian to pray a holy hour before the Blessed Sacrament each day for the rest of his life. This is also an invitation for us to spend more time with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and to receive him worthily, eagerly, just like that 11-year-old Chinese Catholic girl. My brothers and sisters, our earthly bodies are dust formed out of clay, and unto dust they shall return. However, our eternal souls come from the breath of God, and unto God they sh shall return. So we should not be afraid of earthly bodily death, but rather of the spiritual eternal death, eternal death, which we can avoid by attaching and uniting ourselves with Jesus, the God-man who connects us with God, and by washing ourselves clean of sin with His divine mercy. This weekend, we celebrate Father's Day. I invite those of you who are at home uh, at this time, if you have your fathers around you, to extend your hands over them as we say a special blessing for all our fathers. So if you could all stand, extend our hands to all our fathers, and we'll pray for them. We bless you and we praise you, God, of our fathers. You are the God of Adam, father of the human family. You are the God of Abraham, our father in faith, who was ready and willing to give up everything to be faithful to you. You are the God of Joseph, who loved and raised Jesus as his own. You are the God and father of Jesus, in our Father in heaven, holy is your name. We thank you, God, for the gift of our fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, fathers-in-law, and stepfathers. Send your Holy Spirit upon our fathers, in whose laps we were cradled, on whose knees we were bowed, by whose hands we were fed, instructed, at times corrected, in whose company we learn to work and play and pray, at whose side we hear your word and celebrate your mysteries. Heal their pains and disappointments, forgive all that needs to be forgiven, give to them the good that they have given to others. Welcome into your arms those who have died. Fill this world, O God, with a Father's love. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray to you as Abba. He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, who is the Father of the poor 
and, and God forever and ever. Amen. Let's hear it for all our fathers. We know that God will never abandon us, and so we cry out with our needs and the needs of the world, knowing that we will be heard. For the Church, our Pope, bishops, and priests, may they continue to lead and guide us to remain rooted in Christ during this difficult time. Let us pray to the Lord. For our government leaders, may God grant them the wisdom and good judgment to implement measures for the well-being of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all our fathers in our Father's Day Novena intentions, may God in His goodness keep them safe and shower them with graces and blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all our healthcare workers, may God strengthen and protect them from infection and harm as they care for those who are ill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for our nativity parents and school families, our ministries, volunteers, and staff, may we remain connected in communion and united in faith, prayer, and rootedness in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of you watching in your homes and in communion with us spiritually, may God protect and bless you with health, peace, faith, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our parish, priests, staff, parishioners, the deceased and sick in our community, for Emmanuel Hernandez, Armando Munoz, Anton, Vu Man, Rachel Duran, Eligio Aguayo, Vincent Vincente Tran, Joseph Fan, Maria Lu, for our birthday celebrants, Emily Renteria, Timothy Venegas, Helen Kelly, Alicia Nunez, for those celebrating their wedding anniversaries. And for all the graduates of our school and parish families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for those affected with the COVID virus, the special men, especially Armando Lopez, Antonio Robles, Angel Mesa, Manuel Morales, Richard Morales, Francisco Guzman, Marie Luz Flores, Jesse Duran, Rodolfo Parcenas, Robert Razo, Hippolyto Peña, Alex Rodriguez. For the repose of the soul of those who have, who have succumbed to the virus, Maria Asuncion, Nelly Rodriguez, Rodel de Maano, for peace and consolation for their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for God's healing for Gabby Martinez, Moises Lagunas, Claudia Villasenor, Anity, Mary Kai, Herman Olingay. God's blessing and protection for the for Nadine Benuya and for the Montecito neighborhood families. And for those who have lost their jobs and all the other intentions, may God in his mercy answer their prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, and for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God of life, you are the source and destiny of our lives. Calm the storms in our lives. Kindle your spirit within us and hear the prayers we offer. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of our parish and school community, I'd like to thank you for your continued generosity to our church, through your Sunday contribution, and for all those who are using our uh, online giving through our website. 
nativityelmonte.org. Again, thank you for your generosity.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those of the Son of God. Lord, I At this time, I invite those of you who are watching in your homes to pray our spiritual communion prayer and invite our Lord Jesus to come into your heart, into your soul, and talk to Him heart to heart.
Just like to remind you of our schedule, we are now gradually reopening our church. So we have issued our daily mass Monday to Friday at the 8 a.m. English Mass. So Monday to Friday, we have the 8 a.m. English Mass. On Fridays, we have our confessions from 4 to 5 and from 6 to 7 in the patio of our Lady of the Land. So again, Fridays, 4 to 5 and 6 to 7 in the patio of our Lady of the Land. On, uh, on Tuesdays, we have our church open for private prayer from 10 to 12 and on Wednesday from 5 to 7 in the afternoon. So the church is open for a private prayer before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. On Sundays, we have our outdoor mass in the school field. This is a drive-in only for all who are able to, uh, to come in your cars. So our schedule of Sundays for our outdoor mass, we have 8 in English, 10 in Spanish, 4 o'clock in Vietnamese, and 6 p.m. in English. Again, so it's 8, a.m. in English, 10 a.m. in Spanish, 4 p.m. in Vietnamese, and 6 p.m. in English. I hope you are able to participate in all these uh, services and celebrations we have as we gradually return.